guys i hope you're all doing well out there today wherever you are in the world and in this video i want to show off two more of dave friedman's splendid creations we've got the bucks and boost and the golden pearl uh, the bucks and boost as the name will suggest is a booster pedal but there's some really neat features on there that really let you shape that boost it's definitely different to anything else i've got and then the golden pearl is a low to mid gain overdrive not your typical tube screamer thing at all it's uh much more flat in response and really sweet sounding. Uh, both of these pedals, their wheelhouse is boosting either a crunchy amp or an already overdriven amp and pushing it over a cliff, uh, your amp on steroids, if you will. Uh, they also both work fantastically into a clean amp. We'll have a look at the clean amp settings at the end. Now, when I play for a crunchy amp myself, I've always got one or two either boost pedals or overdrives in front of it. Uh, it sounds like an advert. I, oh, that meme. I don't always play a crunchy amp, but when I do, I use overdrives and boosters. <laughs> um, but when I do play through a crunchy amp, using things to push it just does something that the amp can't do on its own. It changes the response and the sort of feel between the amp and guitar. Yes, you can push it into more distortion if you need it, but sometimes it's just about changing the frequency response or the attack. I'm going to put these in front of a couple of different amps for this video because they react differently in front of different amps. Uh, I've got the Marshall Origin for sort of a crunchy breakup tone. I've then got a Freya era VHT Pitbull um, for more distortion, showing you how you can shape that. And then I'll use my Laney for some clean tone. So let's get into it. Starting off with the Marshall Origin head, the Bucks and Boost is an absolute godsend for this amp. Um, I was asked after doing the Origin video, which pedals do you use to boost it? Uh, and my answer was pretty much anything with an EQ because you need to pull out some of that front end bass. Um, the Bucks and Boost fortunately has this tight control and all the way counterclockwise is full bass content. And as you turn it up, it cuts the low end, which really tightens up an amp. On this pedal, you've also got a three band EQ. The mids and the bass are boost only. So when they're all the way down, it's flat. And then the treble, when it's in the middle, is flat and you can boost or cut the treble. Uh, you've also got this switch here, which will let you bypass the EQ section entirely. Uh, the EQ is currently on. If I turn it off, we can have a listen to what the tight control can do for this Marshall. So while that's a good sound, the Marshall is quite woolly on the front end. So if we were to just boost it with no tone shaping, you can hear that it's all woolly and a bit confused. As I turn up this tight control, you'll hear that, that bottom end cleans right up. So in my opinion, that's a massive improvement to the Marshall. This is an ideal candidate. If you've got one of those origin heads uh, to boost up and get all the juicy gain out of it, the boost that's on tap in the Marshall is pretty, 
base heavy and it doesn't do it any favors. The Bucks and Boost has a massive amount of boost on tap. Uh, what's cool about it is you can also cut as well if you wanted to do that and get your sort of cleaned up sound. Uh, the unity gain is around here and I'll show you how much boost is on tap. <laughs> And while raising that up, obviously the level was pushing the front end of the Marshall. I raised the tight control and it cleared it right up. So let's have a listen to the EQ section. Now I'm gonna leave the tight control about there and about that amount of boost. Engaging the EQ at the moment is flat, so it will have no difference. <laughs> Let's have a listen to the mid-range boost. Tons of mid-range, but doesn't ever get like too aggressively honky. Uh, I'll show you the bass control with the tight down, just so you can hear what the bass end boost is doing. Obviously, that's not all that useful with this amp, but it's there on tap for other things, other purposes, should you need it. Then the treble boost and cut. Again, I think the treble's in a really nice position. It doesn't get too aggressive either way. So that was some of the bucks and boosts through the Marshall. Moving over to the Golden Pearl, hitting the Marshall now, and you've got your standard volume, drive, and tone, and then you've got a high cut and a voice. The voice controls the clipping. The middle position, I believe, is no clipping in place, and then you've got LED or diode either side. I can't remember which one is which, but I'll add a little overlay for you. The high cut just shaves off a little bit of high end. The voice and the high cut are more noticeable running into a clean amp uh, with the drive turned up a bit. For boosting, it's a subtle change, but it is there. So into the Marshall, the Golden Pearl sounds like this. So plenty of boosting power on tap. You can drop the drive right down and just push the level into the amp.
we're just checking out the the high cut like i said it's quite subtle into a crunchy amp but it's good for just tailoring that tone <laughs> So to me, they're both really useful pedals in their own right. The Bucks and Boost can obviously be as transparent as you want it or as colored as you want it using the EQ and the tight control. The Golden Pearl has this like mid-range snarl about it, but it's not uh, a huge mid bump like a tube scream or anything like that. It's, it's just like adding an extra gain stage to your amp, I suppose, the Golden Pearl, whereas the Buxom is just pushing your amp into submission. So we're now hooked up and hitting the front of my VHT Pitbull. The reason I picked both the Marshall and the VHT is they're really opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to response. The Marshall relies a lot on power amp behavior and just turning everything up loud to get its crunch. And as a result, the bottom end, it can be quite out of control. That's why something like the Buxom Boost with the ability to shape that tone really helps. The VHT on the other hand is super tight in the bottom end uh, and has a more modern sounding preamp. Because of the tightness, sometimes it can feel quite stiff to play the VHT and uh, using a boost pedal in front of it really seems to loosen that up and give it a little bit more juice. So we're going to try both of these pedals in front of it. First of all, this is the VHT Dry. <laughs> Uh, and then boosting in the front end a bit with the Buxom Boost. That works fabulously in the front of that. The ability to just tighten up that bottom end, push some top end and mids, it, it's just, it just brings the amp to life to me. Obviously, don't know how well it's gonna translate out there, but sat in the room, that does the really good things. Checking out the Golden Pearl now, pushing the VHT. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
So for me, into the front of an amp like this, the bucks and boost makes a great rhythm kind of shaper. Obviously, you could set it up as more of a solo boost. And then the golden pearl is a great lead booster, really makes stuff jump out. And like I said, pushing the front of this amp with a pedal like the golden pearl just uh, gives, gives it a bit more give. It's not as stiff, a bit more enjoyable to play. Something I wanted to try while the VHT is plugged in is what the Bucks and Boost can do for a high gain amp with some drop tuned in front of it. So this is my baritone guitar. I really want to try out this tight control and see what it can do for the front end. <laughs> That's a massive improvement for me. That tight control is worth its weight in gold. Lastly, I just want to hear what these pedals sound like hitting a cleaner amp. So this is my Laney LC32. Uh, its clean channel is pretty bland sounding and I often use a pedal to give it a bit of life. Uh, I used the Bucks and Boost in a recent video and I thought it sounded really good. So here is that. <laughs> So the boost itself already has brought the amp to life, but then obviously you have the ability to do all the tone shaping as well. So I'd like a bit more top end sparkle, a little bit more mid range to fatten it up a bit, boost up the bass, and then just tighten it a little bit. And it sounds like this. So pushing the front end with the buxom and bit of tone shaping, it really brings that preamp to life. Uh, next, having a listen to the Golden Pearl. <laughs> So you can hear that high cut is really effective running into a clean amp.
So that was my look at these two great boxes from Friedman Amplification. Uh, if you're looking to give your amp a swift kick up the arse, I would strongly recommend either of those. They both have their own thing going on, but are both equally useful. Uh, the EQ section on the Bucks and Boost is uh, a game changer for me. That will definitely be my booster of choice uh, from now on. Thanks for hanging out with me today and checking out some gear. I hope you got what you needed from this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you like what I do. And I really hope to see you in another video soon. Cheers, guys.